If you're wanting to run Linux as your daily driver in 2026 without having to give up Windows completely, this is the cleanest dual boot setup I found. And I'll show you today how to build it step by step. In this video, we're setting up a desktop PC to dual boot Windows and Linux, specifically Omarchi, with a shared drive between them so you can edit videos, pass files, and switch operating systems without the usual mess. And I've actually wiped my entire computer to walk you through it. So Linux is my main environment but I still need Windows occasionally for tools like DaVinci Resolve and a few PC-only apps. Instead of compromising, I built a setup that gives me both cleanly. By the end of this video, you'll have the exact same layout. Separate operating systems, a shared NTFS drive, and a dual boot system that actually makes sense. So if you've wanted to run Linux but weren't ready to fully ditch Windows, go and grab any desktop, mini PC, or old laptop, and let's build this thing together. And here's the plan. So I recently pieced together a used desktop PC, my first desktop in like 20 years, seriously. I may have to do a separate video on the why and what and that whole process, but here was the plan with this heading into 2026. There are two NVMe drives in my computer. One is a one terabyte NVMe. I'll be installing Windows on this. The other is a two terabyte NVMe. I'm installing Omarchi on 500 gigabytes of this and will leave the other 1.5 terabytes as a shared NTFS drive between the two. And this means we'll have to do a manual Omarchi installation in order to install it on a partition, but it's actually not that bad. Let's begin with Windows, which we'll move fast through as most people can already handle this part. And if you need to skip around, there will be timestamps below. And if you get stuck along the way, leave a comment or feel free to jump into the Travis Media community and we can talk about it there. Link below. Oh, and quick disclaimer. I used this capture card to capture the installations, BIOS, prompts, and all that from the source computer. And the quality didn't turn out that great, so bear with me. So let's create a Windows boot disk and install that to start. Insert a USB drive that's at least eight gigabytes. Search for Windows 11 ISO Mac, because I'm on a Mac doing this. Scroll down and under download Windows 11 disk image ISO for x64 devices, choose the Windows 11 multi edition. Click confirm. Select your language and confirm. And choose 64 bit download to download the Windows ISO. Now open up disk utility, choose your USB disk and erase. The name I'll put is Windows 11, format is MS-DOS FAT, and for scheme we'll leave as GUID partition map. And go ahead and erase your USB. Once that's done, we want to download an application called WinDisk Writer. So Google that, click on the GitHub page, choose WinDisk Writer under releases, and download the zip. And once that's done, open the zip and drag the application file into the applications folder, and then open it up. Now, because this is an unsigned application, you'll need to go to Settings, Privacy and Security, and scroll down and choose Open Anyway to open it up. Finally, select that downloaded Windows ISO file for your Windows image. Your target device should be the USB stick. Make sure you have FAT32 selected as your file system, and start. Once that's done, eject the USB and put it in a USB port of the computer you want to install Windows on and boot it up to install. Now the only thing I want to note on the install is one, I got my PC build used and there was a Windows product key already activated on my hardware. So I can choose I don't have a product key and it will activate fine. But you may need to enter your key here if you do not. And then second, be sure you choose the right drive to install Windows on. For me, it's the disk one, one gigabyte drive. So proceed with the install and eventually, after declining all the adware and denying your data being sent to Microsoft, you'll have a working Windows install. So go ahead, shut it down, and let's move on to installing a partitioned Omarchi. So Omarchi on easy install wants your entire disk. And the only way to partition this is to do a manual install. Thankfully, Omarchi has great docs on how to do this, but leaves out some critical information, which I'll cover here. I've also laid this out in a blog post over at Travis.media, link to that below. First, the boot disk we need to create is not Omarchi, but the Arch Linux ISO. We install Arch Linux and then install Omarchi on it. So go to omarchi.org, choose Manual, and scroll down to the Manual Installation Guide. Click on Download the Arch Linux ISO, 
Select this link under the HTTP direct downloads section to check out the Miro sites, and I'll just choose the first one after Worldwide. And be sure to download the Arch Linux x86-64 ISO file. After that's done, download or open up Balina Etcher, or if you're on Windows, Rufus. We'll select Flash from File and select the Arch Linux ISO that you downloaded. Select your target, which is the USB stick that you're going to install this on, and then Flash. And when that's done, you'll have your Arch Linux USB boot drive. Plug this into the USB port on the device you also installed Windows on, and let's get Omarchi set up. Let's boot up our computer, and when you see this screen, hit F2 to enter the BIOS. And this could possibly be F7 or delete on your computer. And here we're going to do two things. First, we need to disable Secure Boot, and that will be found under the Boot menu. So I'll go to Advanced, Boot, Expand Secure Boot, and I'll change it to Other OS. Windows UEFI mode is Secure. Other OS is not. We want Other OS or Secure Boot disabled. Second, set your first boot option to your USB disk so that it will boot from that. Omarchi will change this back after it gets installed. Save your changes and exit. When it boots, choose the Arch Linux install medium and eventually you'll get to this command prompt. Now following the Omarchi manual install instructions, let's first connect to Wi-Fi by running IWCTL, which is a tool for configuring wireless internet. And this command starts an interactive session. Next, type station WLAN 0 scan. Then, station WLAN 0 connect and the name of your Wi-Fi network. You'll be prompted for the passphrase of that network to connect, and then type exit to exit this interactive session. Next, you'll run arch install, all one word, to begin the installation of Arch Linux. And that will bring us to these configuration settings. Here, you want to set each setting as detailed in this manual installation guide. Be sure to do them all. That's straightforward. The tricky part is the disk configuration, because this guide doesn't tell you how to partition. So let me walk you through it. Choose disk configuration, partitioning, and use a best effort default partition layout. Select the disk you want to install Omarchi on, not the USB disk, not the disk we installed Windows on, but the other. For me, this is the 2 terabyte NVMe drive. File system is BTRFS, which stands for B-Tree File System. In this note about using default subvolumes, choose Yes. Use compression, Yes. And you end up with this config. So the plan here is to create a boot disk, then the rest for Omarchi. This large drive is compressed and has subvolumes, but we want to partition this further. Well, why then did we choose best effort layout? Well, we chose it to have it create this boot disk for us, that's all. We now are going to partition this large disk. So choose partitioning again, and this time choose manual partitioning. Select your disk, not the USB, not the Windows, but the one for Linux. Now select the larger partition, not the boot, and choose delete partition. It should now show with a status of free. Now we want to create a partition from it. So choose the large disk, and I'm going to partition an allotment of 512 GIB for my Omarchi install. So type 512 GIB, lowercase i, and that should be BTRFS. And now you see that on this install, we will create a boot drive, create a 512 GB drive, which we'll install Omarchi on, and the rest will be free for us to make into an NTFS drive to share between our Windows and Linux installs later. Now, a couple more important things to do here for our Omarchi drive. Select it and choose Mark is Compressed. You should see Compress equals ZSTD under the Mount options now. Select it again, and now we need to add back those default subvolumes that we removed when we deleted the partition. So choose Set Subvolumes, and let's do this one by one. First, we'll do a name of at with a mount point of forward slash. Choose add subvolume to add another, and this will have a name of at home with a mount point of forward slash home. The next one is at log, mount point of forward slash var slash log. And then the final one is at package, and that's at slash var cache pacman pkg. And I have all these listed on my blog post if you need to copy and paste, link to that below. But after all four of these are added, choose confirm and exit, 
and you should have a final disk configuration screen that looks like this. We have our boot partition, and we have our 512 GIB BTRFS partition that is compressed and has these four sub volumes. The rest of the disk will remain free. At this point, again, be sure to hit all the options listed in the manual installation Omarchi docs. This includes disk encryption, which is required, and actually, let's just do that now. Choose disk encryption. Encryption type needs to be set to LUKS, which is the standard for Linux full disk encryption. Set an encryption password, and then for partitions, be sure you are encrypting your Omarchi partition, which in this case is my 512 GB. Now go back and hit all the other options. When you're done, scroll down to install to install Arch Linux. And when that's finished, choose Reboot System. On Reboot, choose Arch Linux, and you'll need your password to access the root volume. Then you'll need to log in with the user you created. Note that I set my host name to Omarchi. That's why it says that here. We haven't installed it yet. It's just the host name that I chose. So go ahead and log in. And finally, as in the manual install docs, we run the curl command to install Omarchi. Enter your password for sudo, and it will install Omarchi for you. And when it's done, you'll reboot into a fresh install of Omarchi. Now, side note, I have a lot of errors up here at the top. At the time of this install, Hyperland just released a new update before Omarchi could react and broke a few things. There was already a GitHub issue out there around it, which advised at the moment to downgrade, which I did. And all is well until they get an update pushed. If you're following this tutorial, it's probably already fixed and you'll have no issue. If you need to downgrade, here's the way. Now there are two more things to do here. First, we need to add windows to our boot screen. So when we boot up our computer, we can easily choose between the two. And then second, we need to create a shared volume between our two operating systems. Adding windows to our boot screen is easy. Omarchi uses Lemony, which is an advanced bootloader. And we simply need to open a terminal with super and enter and type sudo lemony scan l-i-m-i-n-e dash scan which will detect active boot entries and we'll choose number one windows boot manager to add that to our boot screen and if you want to take a look at that config just to confirm just cat the lemony.conf file and you'll see that windows has been added so now when we reboot we can choose from the screen to go the route of omarchi which will default if you don't hit anything or we can scroll down and choose Windows Boot Manager to boot Windows instead. Let's go ahead and choose Windows so we can make our free space into a shared NTFS drive between the two. So boot Windows, type in Disk Management, and create and format hard disk partitions. There you'll right click on the unallocated free space, choose New Simple Volume, keep the default full volume size, I'll assign the letter D to be this drive, and I'll change the volume label to be named Shared. You can set this to whatever you want, but Shared seems like a good name for me. Click Finish, and you should now see a D drive called Shared. And we're done on Windows. Now reboot your machine, and this time we'll boot into Omarchi. Open a terminal, which again is Super Enter. And run LSBLK, which stands for List Block Devices. So quick note here, SDA is our USB drive. We need to pull that out. NVMe1N1 is our Windows drive and NVMe0N1 is our Linux drive. But the partition inside of that, NVMe0N1P3, is the free space. And if we run this again with the F flag, we'll see the FS type of NTFS and the label of shared. So this is the name we need, NVMe0N1P3. Let's create a shared drive in our mount directory. And let's go ahead and mount this drive on our machine in that directory. And note the slash dev before it. And we can confirm this by running an ls on that directory. But we don't want to do that every time. We want this to auto mount for us on each boot. So to do this, let's get the UUID or universally unique identifier for this drive. To get that, run blkid with the drive and copy this UUID to the clipboard. Finally, we'll edit the slash etsy slash fstab file, which stands for file systems table, so we can add this to it. And look at these others, they should be familiar. They're from our sub volumes that we defined 
and our boot partition is here too. And as a next entry, let's add our UUID and some spaces in between and then slash mount slash shared and then defaults comma no a time. And default includes things like read write, so we don't need to define those individually. And then finally, zero and zero. And then let's change ownership of that mounted drive to my user. You'll want to replace Travis with your user and group. And we're done. But I want this folder to live a little bit closer, maybe in my home user directory. So let's create a sim link to that mount from our user folder. So I want it to live here. And to create this sim link, I'll run ln dash s mount shared and then link that to a home shared folder now if i list the files and folders in my home directory i'll see the shared folder there linked to the mounted drive easy access now one final tip actually a very important tip windows will fight linux for your drive long story short linux will mount this drive as read only and to make this work seamlessly between the two log into windows go to control panel power options, choose what the power buttons do, and disable turn on fast startup. This is important. And that's it. You have a fully functioning Windows Omarchi machine with a shared drive to pass files between them. If you ran into any issues, let me know below or on my blog post or jump into the Travis Media community and we can work it out. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so and I'll see you in the next video.